Greetings ladies and gentlemen, it is I am the one and only Maxi here once again and I am back for the likes of the Maxi Toys videos. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for some more of Let's Play of Piglet's Big Game for the Game Boy Advance. So last time we have completed Pooh's Dream and that is by far the shortest version of that particular dream, mainly because of the first level in that particular version and on top of that, there's much more of a less involved kind of situation or somewhat. So today, for this video is that we're going to be hitting into the forms of the second dream in the game, which appears to be Rouge Dream. And somebody tells me the theme is going to be remains the same as the console version. Rue fell asleep thinking of his ball and how his friend Piglet would have surely helped him get it back. Well, despite the fact that unlike the console version of the game, that basically he's hoping to able to get the blue ball back. For some reason in this version of the game, it's been replaced by a football, or to be more specifically, a cardboard football more like, which is kind of strange, I must say. Although, then again, because of the handheld's limitation. So, either way, so structurally speaking, in this stream in particular, it's pretty much exactly the same as the console version, except, again, with more areas we can able to interact with that we've never actually seen before on the console version. And on top of that, about the fact the matter is, though, I'm pretty sure that we will come across into someone that is very familiar. Well, for those of you who experienced the console version of the game already. So, either way, though, right from the get-go, we did already get ourselves the second Brave Face that we can now able to learn from. And on top of all that stuff, though, about the fact the matter is, though, this entire dream takes place in a cardboard cutout crafted world. Which, as a result of that kind of stuff, though, it's pretty much exactly similar to the console version, except with the different layouts. And on top of that, mil uh, well... You probably get the idea of how do I explain about any of this specific stuff though in mind, so... And somebody tells me we actually obtain the scissors, or a pair of scissors more like, so... Kind of strange to able to have the scissors in here, despite the fact that it's actually pretty darn sharp to able to actually keep it in the pocket. At least luckily Piglet does not get stabbed or anything, well, at least I hope not anyway. So, again, because of the video game logic, so, either way, though, because chances are, though, I could have able to accept that, so... And what can we do with this pair of scissors? Is to obviously just cut out this little cardboard fence, so that way we can able to actually proceed to the actual dream itself, or the continuation of this entire world, so... Now, as far as I'm aware about the fact the matter is, though, oh yeah, we can also be able to actually press the B button and use the directional pad to able to look around and all that stuff, though, which I seem to rarely use that point. Well, I'm only going to be using that for... Is that supposed to be Tigger over there? Well, something tells me about the fact that, well, much like the console version of the game, there are a couple of times that we will come across into one of those playable characters eventually. So, for instance, something tells me we will play as Tigger, just like the forms of how it does it on the console version. So, yeah, you probably get the idea about the, how this is going. So, either way, this is... Oh, 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 wait, 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 wait. Huh, okay then. I almost first thought that the actual cookie is going to go out of bounds, but it did turn out it just bounced all over the place. So, I appreciate about that. So, either way, now we've found every single cookies in here. One thing that's a little bit odd in this is that there's no victory fanfare if you manage to be able to obtain not only every single cookies in each area, but also with the forms of the potions as well for bravest of the mall challenges, which I'll get into later. So, either way though, so yeah, something tells me that, yep, we're going to be playing as Tigger in one of those segments. So, of course, just like the console version, we definitely need to avoid not only heffalumps, but also walls as well. So, either way, though, because chances are, yeah, basically all this means, though, is about the fact that, well, he's basically placed pretty much like the console version, except that uh, I don't think you can able to bounce or something like that to make things a bit more faster and quick. I can assure you for this point, well, mind you, it's my first time experiencing this version, mind you, so... However, though, you can't able to actually pull up with a combat, uh, mode, unlike Piglet. So, either way, though, yeah, I don't think we can able to actually just keep on bouncing around and all that stuff. Plus, certain, uh, areas are actually a lot shorter compared to the forms of how it does it on this very lengthy sections during the forms of in a console version throughout, so... 
And I believe something tells me that is where our Ruse Playroom is going to be at. So, but of course, just like the console version, we definitely need a key. But, except the fact that we have to able to get the key in a different section this time. So, either way though, because chances are though, everything else will be pretty much accounted for for the sake of a lot of differences between the console version compared to the handheld versions. So... Anyway, so that's pretty much as far as I can usually just try to describe about any of this stuff. So let's just activate this little mushroom thing right here to activate the fence. So now we can able to take control of Piglet once again. And hopefully we can able to take on some more basic heffalumps and find some more cookies in the next area. So either way though. So yeah, a few things I want to explain for this point today, and that is about the fact that, well, today's day is, of course, the, uh, is the 13th of April today, in this case, in 2023 today. Naturally speaking, though, about the fact the matter is, though, we're getting very close towards the end of Mario Kart Tour Yoshi Tour for the sake of 2023 version of it. And because of that, though, well, I'm pretty sure that Tiana, she's already explained about this ever since in Kirby's Return of Dreamland Deluxe, Let's Play Wise. That about the fact the matter is though, we might be curious to see what the next choice are going to be, but I'm sure that she will mention more about it until possibly next Monday, because I can assure to you about the fact that I'm presuming that Joy, she's obviously going to be still mainly focusing on WarriorWare smooth moves for the time being. So, in relatively speaking though, about the fact the matter is though, is that, well... I can assure you about the fact that we've pretty much almost done with the forms of the rest of the WarriorWare series of games. Well, apart from a couple of exceptions though, mind you, which is uh, specifically uh, WarriorWare Snapped because it's obviously a DSiWare exclusive title for the Nintendo 3DS or DSi. And on top of that with the forms of WarriorWare Inc. Min uh, Mega Party Games. Now, despite it's basically a port to the Game Boy Advance game, so as a result of that kind of stuff, though, that's as far as I can usually describe about it. And on top of that, with the forms of Game & Warrior, because usually Game & Warrior is my most disappointed games in the series, especially because it plays nothing like the actual WarriorWare game for me, because still, I found the mini games to be overly bland and way too similar in structure. And on top of that, I just found the game pretty damn dull and boring. Although, relatively speaking, the only good thing about Gaming Warrior to me, though, is the visual presentation, and that's pretty much about it. So, anyway, so I think we basically take care of the cookies from here, and immediately after that, we found Rue locked in the forms of his playroom, just like the console version. So, now of course, we do need to get the key, and since they're about the fact that, you know, Rue mentions our mama, in this case, Kango in some cases, though, we need to head back into the forms of Kanker's house for the uh, second time, or generally speaking, though, it, it's been about uh, two days ago since I actually have last played this, because obviously about the fact that Tsuyano, she's still working on, you know, Kirby's Return of Dreamland Deluxe, basically, so... Now, I'm pretty sure that someone said in the comments down below about the fact the matter is, though, that uh, it, they are wondering about the fact that if we're able to do the, uh, the extra game mode, well, it turns out it's probably not going to happen, because not only do I find it's a bit hard compared to the forms of how it does it on the main mode, but it's also straight to the point about the fact that I just feel like it plays pretty much exactly the same as the forms of how it does it on the main game, so I don't feel like trying to able to compliment that. So either way, now we've meet up with Kenga, and unlike any forms of how it does it on the console version of the game, that normally in order to able to get the key, that you have to able to collect every single cookies in one of those uh, sections, mainly Kenga's house. Like if you found every single cookies, then now you can able to actually get the key from Kenga. In here though, Kenga just opens up the door for us. And basically, though, I'm pretty sure it... Oh, there's a key right there. Oh, no need to get those cookies then, huh? So, yeah, basically, we have to get the key upstairs, and that's essentially how you can get the key from up there. So, yeah, it's kind of strange to able to have that specific decision. So, either way, though, because, again, I'm used to with the console version, you know. So, either way, time to take down this basic wall right here, so we can just... You know what I mean, just trying to able to get the correct button combinations as you saw. So, either way though, because every once in a while that we will come across into uh, not only a singular button combination, or as potentially speaking though, again, it's been a very long while since I actually have played this game. So, 
But again, it's kind of like a semi-blind playthrough, but I'm pretty sure I'm getting used to with the structure of the game itself. So, either way, now we've actually done with this particular area from now on, and yeah, we finally found a key, so now we need to be able to open up Rue's playroom. So, either way, and straight to the point about the fact that we will be able to actually deal with something out of it, so either way. Yeah, I'm very surprised about the fact that for every single levels in the game, does manage to include the music in the background, unlike the console version, it doesn't. Well, apart from a couple of area exceptions though, because, well, I don't mind the lack of music in certain areas in the console version because I felt it was a little bit more relaxed, more than anything else, but it's just about the fact the matter is though, is that, well, it has been about quite a few weeks since I actually have last played the console version of Piglet's Big Game, so... Anywho though, so let's just go ahead and uh, deal with this particular heffalump right there. So yeah, as far as what I was trying to mention something in your journey forms within the last video, is that remember what I mentioned this earlier? About the fact that I still find Piglet's Big Movie to be an extremely underrated in my opinion. Certainly a good film in my opinion. But compared to Springtime with Rude though, it's definitely one of my least favorites. Especially because, well, not only does it feel like... I don't know, slightly choppy for certain animations and stuff like that, to me though. But it's also, the story feels a bit underwhelming to me. Well, it's a little bit simplistic in my opinion. And on top of all these advances, they somehow removed one of those characters, like there's no Christopher Robin, uh, despite it's been mentioned quite a few times. And on top of that, with the forms of no owl, or maybe potentially no uh, gopher around here either, so, relatively speaking, though, it's just a, feels a bit of a lackluster experience to me, though. Well, I get it because it's for kids, but it's just, well, it's not my cup of tea. So, either way, speaking of Rue, well, basically, he's trying to tell us about the fact that, of course, the ladder is broken, so we do definitely need to find one of those wooden pieces in order to able to place one of those parts on the ladder, so that way we can able to potentially get ourselves the, what else? Our Rue's ball. Or to be more specifically, a football more like. So, in addition to get ourselves the Eraser right here, that's usually it's a very similar design as the console version, but for some reason, there's also a brave face in his uh, playroom, and on top of that, there's the drum. Hmm. Kind of weird, able to actually have the drum in there, which, unlike the console version, does not. So... Anyways, let's spend, as usual, 30 cookies to perform the third Brave Face. So, that way it gives us enough, so that way we can able to take on the main threat until for later on. So, either way. So, what we got to do now is that we need to head back out and head into another way. Because now we've actually got ourselves the an eraser. So that way we can now able to actually erase something before we're able to continue proceeding for, for this dream. So... Yeah, not much else to say, apart from the fact that I'm just trying to able to show you guys where we're supposed to go during the forms of this particular version of the game. It seems kind of strange, I don't think there's any cookies around here or something. Well, mind you, I felt a little bit too blind when it comes to likely doing this kind of stuff, with, like comparing to the console version to the handheld version. So, either way, time to use the an eraser, and somehow we can able to continue things on here, so... Yeah, that's what I mean about the fact that we do have the L and R buttons as inventory item storage, and... Is that it? Was that seriously it? Okay, only two cookies in this section, huh? So, anyways, so I think something tells me we do need to activate every single mushroom, so that way we can able to actually proceed for this point, so... Anywho, though, so... Relatively speaking, though, about the fact the matter is, though, is that, well, when it comes to everything else I could possibly discuss upon things, is that, well, I can assure to you about the fact the matter is, though, is that, well, I don't know about you, because it's been quite a while since I actually did some, my commentary and all that stuff, so, either way, and I believe after this particular, oh, something tells me we've come across into b alarms right here, which, obviously, we do need to get rid of them before we proceed, so... And since we've actually already got ourselves the third Brave Face, that way we can able to finish them off very easily. So, now I believe we need to take two of them down as opposed to one, compared to the forms of how it does it on the console version. So, because I think every, every time when if you obtain a potion, then one of those beehives will eventually disappear. So, 
Yeah, that pretty much stopped up as such. So either way, though, let's just go ahead and uh, uh, double check on something. I think that'll basically be good to go for this point. And of course, we're able to hear that familiar music in the background. So I think something tells me we will come across into something more in peculiar. So either way, let's just go ahead and grab some more cookies before we're able to get the next brave face. I don't think we'll be able to actually see the new brave face until... Uh, let's just say Eeyore's dream, not Al's dream. So, either way, let's meet up with Eeyore. So, speaking of Eeyore, there he is right here. And, of course, we'll have to able to wake him up by simply activating the drum. So, yeah, because apparently he was asleep, according to the actual text box. So, I'm looking for a piece of wood. Take one from my house nearby. It is inside. Okay, that might be part of the reason for it. So, unlike the Fallen Safari does it on the console version, that simply you got to able to just, well, you know what I mean, just trying to able to find one of those, uh, you know, cardboard pieces, you know, with the pink flower and all that stuff. And then basically we have to able to pull out the actual, like, the wood, uh, cardboard switches, so that way you can activate the staircases. I believe in here, though, it's radically different. So, either way, so, let's just go ahead and continue proceeding for this point, and if we activate the switch, it actually changes the conveyor belt's directions. So, and I think something tells me, with those crayons in mind, I believe those will be, um, act out as conveyor belts. So, every time you activate one of those mushroom switches, it actually takes you to either left or right. So, it's all depending on the forms of what specific activation that you might as well go for. So... Alright, so let's just go ahead and, uh, get on to here, and believe it or not, I think we do have to deal with the forms of the time challenges, if I'm assuming so, so either way. And then what I found is a little bit odd, is that I don't think they've shown us a time limit on screen for some reason. Oh, now it does, okay. I keep thinking about the forms of that, one of those limitations or somewhat, but either way, we've got all the cookies despite the fact that we got distracted by sightseeing, so... Now, of course, it's currently closed for Eeyore's house, so... Yeah, something tells me we do need to activate all of those mushrooms in exactly at the right moment, so either way. So let's just go ahead and uh, quickly do this anyway. And that way, we can able to actually get a piece of wood. So that way, we can now able to go back to the actual Bruce playroom, and that would be about it. Well, aside from the fact that, well, there might be a similar thing as in a console version, and so whatever we get to the point, whatever we get to it, so... Yeah, it seems pretty straightforward, especially concerning about the fact that, oh god, speaking of such, well, at least thankfully, unlike the console version, that I just did not pay attention to it at all. Whilst in here, though, I pretty much see this coming, especially with all that sprites usually comes into play. So, either way, though, yeah, that basically does it for this point here. And seriously, it's actually felt quite lengthy for that specific uh, destination, I might add. So, anyway, enough about that distraction. So, I think we should probably go ahead and... Uh, you know, head back into the forms of Rue's playroom, and you can obviously skip those um, enemies if you wanted to, just in case about the fact that, well, I can assure to you, unlike the console version, that basically though about the fact that I just uh, have to get rid of them before I, you know, try to get the rest of the cookies from there, so... Anyway, so... Again, I would have liked able to explain more details about other stuff worth noting for, but I think I should probably let Tiana will mention more details on other stuff for the time being, so... Yeah, I apologize for that particular lack of commentary for this point, guys. Well, apart from the fact that I've usually compared certain changes from the likes of the handheld version of this game, compared to the console version anyway, so... Alright, so let's just go ahead and place this wood, or this stick of wood, right here. And now we can able to obtain the Ruse Ball, in this case of football, for that matter. So you've got my ball back, thank you. And believe it or not, we'll come across into an ambush that I've never seen this uh, Woozle before. Sure, it looks a lot different. Don't worry, Ru, I'll get your ball back. If you want the ball, scare me and I'll let you in. So yeah, we come across into a very strange, oddly colored talking door 
almost assuming it was going to be brown more like. But it turns out it was actually purple in this version for some reason. So of course, just like if Fonts of Power does on the console version, I'm presuming so anyway, not able to proceed, and if you want to take down the talking door, we need to learn more brave faces, and the more you've learned them, then you can obviously take him down. And of course, just like the console version, then afterwards, then we can pretty much take on the forms of one of those uh, woozles to take down, I can assure you for this point. So either way, and something tells me we need to face off against with, I don't know, three of these things? So something tells me about the fact that, oh wow, those goes down very easily, especially because we've already learned the third brave face. And on top of that, they somehow managed to get the barrel on them, so that seems rather strange and bizarre at the same time. Especially that you've never seen these guys on the console version, so... Anyway, we pretty much take those guys down with no problem mode whatsoever, and we retrieve a ball bag, and that's pretty much about it for uh, Rouge Dream, basically. Again, it's a very, very simple and easy world to digest with, although, especially noticeable, this is also very short as well, so either way, that was it. And so, despite the Heffalumps and Walzels, Piglet found the courage inside himself to help his friend Roo. And straight to the point, we're pretty much at the halfway point of the game right now. So because of this though, and of course because there's a new password, so I don't feel like trying to memorize that because, well, I'll explain more about it in the future. So with that being said, we got the endings of this point right here. So join me next time for more Let's Play of Piglet's Big Game for the Game Boy Advance. Is that we're going to be moving on to the third dream in the game, which appears to be none other than Eo's dream. So that should be interesting. So I'll see you guys on Tuesday. Later, fellas.